Hi. Um, I'm going to start by telling you about the goal of my thesis. So I'm trying to replace the traditional oscillator of mechanical watches with a flexure-based oscillator in silicon. And this is my latest prototype here. So let me clarify this. Uh, in a mechanical watch, you usually have an oscillator that is made of a spiral spring that is connected to a balance wheel and rotates on a pivot. And this is a key component of the watch because it's what gives it its regularity and is uh, essential for accurate timekeeping. And I want to replace this with a flexor pivot oscillator. As you can see here, it fulfills a similar motion of oscillating in a pivoting motion, except that there is no physical axis. You only use flexible elements. Now, uh, why do I want to do this? Here is some data that was gathered on some uh, oscillators, and you don't have to look at it in detail, but basically you see that there is a correlation between accuracy of the timekeeper and the efficiency of the oscillator, which is expressed in terms of quality factor. And uh, we see that if the quality factor is higher, the accuracy is better for the timekeeper. So that's why I want to remove the pivot of the oscillator to remove the friction, improve the efficiency, and improve the accuracy. So that's basically my thesis, but I think I have some more time, so I'm going to tell you about one of my challenges. It's called isochronism defect. That's the fact that the frequency of an oscillator depends on its amplitude. It's illustrated here on the pendulum, which becomes uh, slower as its, its uh, amplitude increases. And this is to be avoided for an accurate timekeeper, because we always want to have a regular frequency. That's the key. Um, when you have a rotational oscillator, like a balance spring or a flexure pivot, the stiffness can change with its amplitude. And if you change the stiffness, you change the frequency, and you want to avoid this. So I found a way to uh, overcome this. You can see it on the mock-up of my prototype. Um, when it rotates, these blades make a deformation that is proportional to the rotation, but these other blades here make a much smaller deformation. This is of the same order as the isochronism defect. So by, by uh, changing the stiffness of these blades, I can change the stiffness variation of my pivot without changing the main stiffness. So I can change the isochronism defect. I can tune it. I wanted to verify this experimentally, so I made prototypes with different lengths of these blades. Here they're short, they're stiff, here they're long, they're softer, and I've measured their isochronism. Here uh, you can see for uh, short blades, long blades, I have a defect that is positive, and here negative, so I can actually tune it. And this is my uh, theoretical model, my simulations, and my experiment, and everything matches and shows that it works. Thank you. Now I let you enjoy a slow motion video of uh, the beauty of uh, pleasure pivots. <laughs>